Praise the Lord. We'd like to again welcome everybody by way of internet. God bless you. And we hope that you are going to have a blessed new year. Amen. Today I titled this sermon, It is an Inside Job. Amen. Sounds like a crime scene, don't it? <laughs> it could be a crime against your own self. Hmm. If you think about it. Because we're going to be talking about the inside of us. What's inside of us besides our organs and blood and bone and muscle and well, some muscle anyhow. Amen. What's inside of us? Our heart. Our spirit man. See, so it's an, actually what I mean by an inside job. The Lord, the Holy Spirit works on the inside of us. Amen. Amen. He said it's not necessarily what goes in a person's mouth that defiles them, but what comes out mm -hmm. from the inside out. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the way we talk, the way we treat people, those kind of things. That's what can defile a person. Cursing, damning someone, you know, uh, putting down somebody made in the image of God. Hello? Mm -hmm. You see, them? they're the things. Hatred, that all comes out of the heart. Because the Bible said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Or, can reverse out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart speaketh. Either way, it's both the same. Because it comes from the inside. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Where's our tongue? Inside our mouth. Mm -hmm. Think about it. What we do with that tongue, oh my God. wonder why James says it's it's so unruly. Mm -hmm. It's set on fire from hell itself. Mm -hmm. And he's talking to the Christians. Mm -hmm. Letter to the Christians. That if anybody can rule his tongue, he's perfect in every way. But nobody can. One time or another, sooner or later, we're going to give somebody a tongue lashing anyway. <laughs> then we feel about that bigger we should. See? So we have to be careful because it really is an inside job. And this is what I mean by that. In Luke chapter 17, verse 21, it says, Behold, the kingdom of God is within. Jesus. Think about that. Yes. <laughs> we're talking about everybody that we got the Holy Spirit living in us because we're saved, born again. And that means the kingdom of God is living within us. God himself, the third person of the Trinity, lives in us. It's an inside job. Mm -hmm. So we'll hopefully we don't corrupt that. Because it's still inside our heart, inside our being, we still have flesh to deal with. And the flesh is all, there's no good thing in the flesh, is there? I was thinking this morning, I was taking my shower. I said, what in the world? Because I was thinking about my sermon. I said, let me, I have to prove a point, you know, in, in a different way that why the Bible says there's no good thing in the flesh. And I was thinking, boy, if I didn't shower every day, my flesh would stink, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, I'd know it the first day. I might be able to put a little cologne on and hide it the first day, but the second day, Bev's going, what is that? I don't know. You know. Third day, everybody in the house is going to know it. The fourth day, I better not go shopping because I'm going to have the whole aisle to myself because everybody's going to run. Why? Because flesh stinks. We can pamper it, powder it, make up it, hairspray it. Well, I don't have to worry about that no more. But anyhow, we, got, we do all kinds of things to make our flesh smell good, look good. But the, no matter what, it's still no good. It stinks. That's why when we die, the worms eat us up. Ain't that, ain't that interesting? I'm just glad you came today. Let me see here. <laughs> see, there's no good thing in the flesh. That's why we have to cater to the spirit man. That's why he said, don't walk after the flesh. Paul said, don't walk after the flesh, but walk after the spirit. From the inside, you walk after the things of God. The things that interest God should interest us. That's what keeps you focused. That's what keeps you real. That's what keeps you in love with God, in love with souls, in love with people. You know, that's, where, that's why you can put up with a lot of nonsense. Oh, it must have hit a nerve. Let me camp here for a minute. See, 
we, we don't we we're, we're intolerant people these days. Well, everybody's stressed out, man. You know, and, you know this rat race of a world we live in and everything. So we're very intolerant. You know, there's so many toxics in the water, toxics in the food, and don't you think that affects your mood? It does. And you know, if you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, Christian or not, feel with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. And yet, we have to wrestle this flesh, this temper of ours, the tongue and all these things on the inside. That war that goes on between the spirit and the flesh. And yet the kingdom of God still dwells in us. God still gives us gifts of the spirit. That's because we're so imperfect, but he's perfect. The gift is perfect. The gift of faith, the gift of healing, the gift of miracles, the gift of tongues, the gift of discernment, there's nine gifts. They're, they're perfect. But we still are imperfect. So that's what you hear me saying, the kingdom of God is within us. Kingdom of God is all the gifts, the spirit of God, the love of God, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, temperance, against such there is no law. Amen? Nine fruits, nine gifts. With all that going on inside of us, we still wrestle the flesh. We still cater sometimes when we shouldn't to the flesh. We still can somehow we be deceived by the enemy or we work it out in our own evil minds that it's okay to compromise because everybody's doing it. No, it's not okay. I don't care if the whole world does it. Matter of fact, the whole world did do it in the days of Noah, and only eight souls got saved out of those millions. So you don't follow the crowd. You follow Jesus. Amen. 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 And allow the kingdom of God that's within you to rule and reign in your heart and give God the praise of glory. I ain't saying it's easy, and sometimes it's harder for some than others. Listen, here's one thing we have to realize. We're not all the same. And not everybody has the same gifts. Like I said, there's nine gifts. He said, Paul even said, does all speak in tongues? No, we don't all speak in tongues. Do all do signs and wonders and miracles? No, but it's the same spirit. You see? Do all prophesy? No, but some prophesy. That's the different parts of the body of Christ. Do all have that supernatural gift of faith? You see, there's faith and then there's the gift of faith, the Bible says. Now, we're talking about the gift of faith. It's just that. It's a gift over and above what other faith you have. God wants that person to have such faith that they can move mountains, spiritually speaking. You see? Now, we can't, that person that has that gift of faith better know how to handle these gifts because he's going to have a tendency or she's going to have a tendency to look down on the ones that have little faith. See what I'm saying? We don't realize that, that it ain't because we're all that. It's because he's all that. He gave us that gift. All right? He gave us that gift. And we ought to do right by that gift. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we will give an account for that gift. Who's uh, playing music now? All right. Hey. Everybody's checking their phones. All right. Be nice to shut them off before we come yeah. into church. Hallelujah. Now let me go on. God's kingdom includes, of course, the Holy Spirit. That's part of the gift is the Holy Spirit. And also, speaking in tongues is a gift, but it's the least gift. Did you know that? Out of all the gifts, Paul said it's the least gift. And Paul said, but yeah, I speak in tongues more than you all. But I'd rather speak a few words of understanding to win somebody to Christ than stand there all day jabbering tongues and look at me like I'm crazy and don't know a word I said. Amen? Amen. Amen? But yet it's important. You know why it's important? And this isn't my message, but I'll give you a little side footnote here. It's important for you as a personal gift to edify yourself in the Lord. You're not only praising God with it, but you're edifying yourself. The Bible says, build yourself up in the holy faith. And you do that through speaking in tongues. Yes. Through the gift. That's just not just chattering and just 
speaking off in the air. No, I'm talking about meditating while you're speaking in tongues and worshiping God. Amen. There's so much wrong teaching on all that. People get confused. You know, there's going to be more people in hell that talk in tongues than probably in heaven. Amen. That's right. That's right. Just because you talk in tongues, it doesn't mean you get a free pass. But it's important. It's totally important. But it's been abused by, like so many other things, have been abused in Christianity. And that's not my message again today. But maybe one day we'll get into that. But uh, you, for 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 now, I want you to realize that it's a holy gift. All these gifts are holy. They're all important. They're all given from God Almighty, from the same Spirit. Okay? And we should use them for His glory. Amen. But God gave it to us as a weapon Amen. to do spiritual warfare. Tear down the strongholds that try to come up against you and your loved ones and your family. Paul said, when you don't know what to pray for, you pray in the Spirit Amen. and speaking in tongues. You pray in the Spirit because the Spirit groans and makes utterances to God in heaven for us because we don't know what to pray about. Amen. Amen. After you pray in English, you're wore out. After five, ten minutes, you're all, you just start repeating yourself. Then he says, go into that heavenly language. Glory be to God. Amen. And then God will do the fighting and combating for you. That's why it's so important. If you have that gift, use it. If you don't have it, get it. And I know just where you can get it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says you lay hands on them and they that believe shall receive. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, we all know that... Uh, what I mean when I say it's an inside job. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. But you have to yield to that Spirit. You have a free will. You can, you can ignore it. You can quench it. The Bible says you can quench the Holy Spirit. And you can grieve the Holy Spirit. Yes. How do we quench the Holy Spirit? By not obeying the, that still small voice that speaks to us and tells us to do something for Him. Mm -hmm. Speak to someone. Go visit someone, pray with someone, give a certain amount of money to a whatever. Oh, that's the, that's how we can we can grieve it by not, doing not listening to it, by disobeying it. We can quench it by the same way. When God's coming on you, like if God speaks to you and He wants you to give a message in tongues for an interpretation, and you don't do it, you quench the Holy Spirit. You robbed everybody in the church from a message from heaven. But we don't want you to muster it up either. It's got to be God. Same with a prophecy. You know, God may well give you a word of knowledge. And you say, oh, I can't do that. That's, yeah, I better not do that. You know, until you uh, know that you have that gift. See, because sometimes you'll never get it if you quench it. Or you'll not use it, you'll lose it. Okay? Because you're grieving God. So when you quench it, you grieve God. Whenever you quench the Spirit of God in any area of your life, OK, 